let us now come to a very very interesting and important thing and when we said that we are not going to solve differential equations but we are going to use the result and try to find through our intuition what the response of other circuits would be because we have solved it once we are not going to do it again so in in trying to develop an intuition this is very important to understand the exponential response so here for this case for example the case of rl circuit without any source the it was equal to i not e raised power minus r over l t this was how the current would behave once the circuit is allowed to um, lose energy the inductor is allowed to lose energy in the inductor so let us let us try to plot this so we see that this is an exponentially decaying plot the plot starts with i not at t is equal to 0 and when we put t is equal to plus infinity we get e raised power minus infinity as an exponent which is 0 so it starts from i not goes down to 0 but goes down exponentially so this value that the curve starts uh, from i not uh, for different values uh, basically is going to affect in this fashion so suppose this is the value of i not then the curve may look like this and if we change the value of i not say we double it the curve will look something like this so because it has doubled so along this y-axis it's going to double so here whatever this distance was this the, we will have same distance here so at this point whatever this distance is we are going to get the double of it and here the double of this and so on so basically you can see that uh, we are going to get an ex a curve like this actually it will drop down to zero i have not drawn the curve really well but it is going to drop down to zero so different values of i naught basically have not changed the shape of the curve it's still an exponentially decaying curve so in order to um, to understand the properties of the exponentially decaying response let us try to uh, try to free ourselves from this uh, consideration of this i naught so let us take this to other side rather than plotting graphs of it let us now plot it by i naught so by taking this i naught to this side we are not really uh, concerned with whatever the value of i i naught would be the curve this this now curve uh, of i t over i naught will always start from 1 e raised power minus r over l t so it will always start from 1 decay exponentially and become 0 with time we know this is an asymptotic curve it will never go to 0 actually goes to 0 at t equal to infinity but uh, in real life we usually we usually consider um, very small currents as practically uh, zero so we are going to use that a little later so look at this exp this uh, the, the nature of this curve this exponential decay the curve started to decay at a faster rate see it started to decay at the faster rate but as time goes the rate of decay is reducing so it's not decaying as fast as it was decaying here so having a same amount of time interval here and the same amount of time interval here the amount it has decayed in this interval is larger and the amount it has de uh, decayed in this interval same interval size is smaller so the decay rate is reducing so suppose it it's it started 
with whatever decay rate had it decreased with the same rate it would have become zero some, somewhere here so the rate at which it started decaying it would have become zero somewhere here the current but because the rate kept reducing so basically it became it came to zero quite later on in fact never asymptotically it will move closer and closer to the value zero so this time is usually of a lot of interest uh, in such circuits and we want to find what time is this let us call this time t1 actually there is a special name not t1 of this time yeah, i am going to use that later on so what is the rate at which this started decaying the curve the curve has an expression of e raised power minus r over l t so how do we find the tangent to the curve at a point how can we find the slope of this curve at this point by taking the derivative of this expression so if we take the derivative of e raised power minus r by t t and then find the derivative at t is equal to zero we are going to get find the the slope of this straight line because with the same slope it has to come down to uh, be zero at this time so taking derivative of e raised power minus r by l t we got minus r by l e raised power minus r by l t is a derivative and then finding the value of the derivative at t is equal to zero we are going to get minus r over l and which is the slope of the straight line so if we if we, if we now uh, try to find the time this will take uh, this this line will uh, take or the time at which it will become zero we can obviously find that the equation of the straight line is going to be mx plus e mt actually here plus c the equation would be minus r by l is a decreasing line with time t plus one the y intercept is what y is and on y axis we have it over i naught so at what time it becomes zero so y becomes zero at minus r by l t equal to minus one so at what time it becomes zero is equal to l by r so this t1 is the time at which it becomes zero and this is t by uh, l by r and this has a special name and it is denoted by special greek letter tau 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 is something called the time constant and is a very important uh, feature of a circuit we will see later so and you see the time is purely dependent on the value of the inductance and the value of the resistance is the ratio l over r and the unit of tau is seconds uh, one over second oh, sorry second the units of tau is second because it's a time constant is a time at which it becomes zero if it had been falling with the same rate so the units are second why because the units of l by r second uh, the units of r by l would be per second so, and the exponents are always dimensionless so if this is a time in seconds this must be something in per second one over second and these must cancel out and the dimension the the exponent is dimensionless so this time is the time constant or tau and one tau is actually the time for the decaying exponent to decay to 36.8% of its original value and we can very very easily find this so if we put so we have i y in this case is equal to e raised power minus r over lt so what will be the value of y 
if the value of y at t is equal to 0 was actually 1, e raised to the power 0 is 1. So what will be the value of y when t is equal to tau? So we get e raised to the power minus r over l into l over r. So that is e raised to the power minus 1. And you can use your calculator to find e raised to the power minus 1 is actually 0 0.36. 7, 9, roughly 0 0.368. So this is how we found that tau is the time in which the decaying exponent decays to 36.8% of its max value or the starting value. And if we keep on doing this for two time constants we are going to get e raised power minus 2 and this would be something like what the book says 0 0.1353 that is 13.53 percent e raised power minus 3 is 0 0.0498 which is 4.9 around 5 percent in three time constants is around three uh, five percent of the original value and at four time constants, it becomes 0 0.01832, which is 1.8%. And in five time constants, it becomes 0 0.006738, or less than 1% of the max value. Therefore, if someone asks you in how much time this curves become zero, the actual correct answer is infinity but if in real life you are dealing with a with a starting value like in this case of i naught of say one ampere and then this keeps on falling 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 and within in five time constants it is less than one percent of the one ampere initial current that would be like 10 less than 10 milliamperes actually six 0.738 milliampere if the original current was 1 ampere. So this is quite a small current as compared to this current and for all practical purposes we can say this is almost equal to zero. So if somebody asks you in how much time the current becomes zero you would say, say something like five time constants or five tau. That is why 5 tau is regarded as a standard in uh, considering the time in which a, an RL circuit uh, will uh, lose all its energy. So the inductor in the RL circuit will lose all its energy in five time constants for all practical purposes it will not be zero but it will be a very small uh, fraction of what it its energy was at the start and that is how basically uh, came the importance of uh, tau the time constant and the five time constants and how can we find this value of tau suppose you are trying to see this curve on some uh, oscilloscope on a machine on, on some some gadget so you, this is the curve you see and you want to you want you are trying to see it on an oscilloscope the the current or the voltage maybe later on we will see that we are going to come across voltages when we are dealing with capacitors so you are trying to see this on a oscilloscope and you want to assess what is the value of tau so one idea is to estimate guess where it will be touching crossing zero and then find this time. So from the oscilloscope, you can assess how much time is this. That would be the time constant. And another way is find this value and whatever this value is, find its 36.8% value and see where on the curve, basically that, uh, the, 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 the value of current is closer to that value that you have computed. Whatever the, that, uh, that value is, uh, find the, the time till the value reached to that point and that is going to give you the top. So th there are two ways you can assess 
when whenever you are encountered with a practical RL circuit or RC circuit, we will see later on. And um, this way, you can basically assess and understand the behavior of a typical circuit. So while uh, you know, one thing is not associated with the topic that we are trying to read, but let me try to handle it right here as well because I missed its discussion in the previous video. And that is we should also account for energy. Remember in an RL circuit, the initial energy in this inductor was half. So this is inductor of inductance cell. The initial energy was half L I not square. And ultimately, as the current decays, this energy ultimately dissipates in this resistor. So let us try to find the energy dissipated in this resistor in from zero to infinity. That is from zero to infinity, let us try to find the energy of the resistor. Oh, it's actually wrongly written. Let us try to find the energy that is dissipated in the resistor at infinity. So at infinity, and that would basically be the integral of the power related to the resistor and that is equal to zero to infinity of i t square into r dt. And what do we have here? i t is actually equal to i naught e raised power minus r by l t. So the square of this thing into r and the integral of this thing. So what do we get here? I naught square outside the integral, R outside the integral. And what do we get here? E raised power minus 2 R over L T, the integral of this thing. So what do we get here? I think something of the sort R I naught square, this one, and then minus 2 r sorry mm, minus l over 2 r because it will be in denominator and it will flip when it comes to the numerator e raised power minus 2 r over l t and limits from 0 to infinity so whatever this is if we put infinity here we get e raised power minus infinity which is 0 and if we put 0 here we are going to get minus 1. e raised power 0 is 1 and the upper limit is first and minus this lower limit. So we are going to get minus 1 here and minus minus cancels. So we get r r cancels. We are going to get half L i naught square. So the energy of the resistor at infinity is basically the energy that is dissipated through the resistor at infinity by, by infinity till infinity and is the same as the energy that was contained in the inductor at the start. So we have appropriately accounted for the energy as well and therefore our solution of the current to be equal to this thing makes perfect sense. It corroborates with the energy thing as well. 